Hey guys, welcome to the Tangent Pipeline where we go through the entire process of making a skin in a kind of easy and introductory way, courtesy of me, Hydroxide, and Shadrat Jaws. Now, this software is called ZBrush and it's kind of the industry standard for 3D modeling and it is what they use at DE, which you may have seen from some previous streams on Primetime or the Deadstream. So it's kind of a nice one. We're kind of relying now on the previous part we did about you know downloading your files and importing them. You need those files downloaded and unzipped from the Tenogen tool to begin how to actually start sculpting onto them. So first things first, there's a plugin in the Z plugin list that's called FBX Export and Import. And this is kind of how we get the model into ZBrush. So you just click that plugin name, you'll see a little drop down. There's two big buttons for export and import one for taken in and one for exporting for your final stuff. So all we need to do now is just click the import button and the dialog for your windows will pop up to see where you want to import from. All you need to do is just go to the folder where your stuff is extracted to and find where it is. I keep all my documents in a tangent folder just for neatness, but we're going to use Ash for the sake of this purposes. So when you locate the FBX file, just double click it and it will import. And it may ask you for some texture map that it's looking for, which are usually diffuse and normals, but you find these in the in-game textures folder. All you need to do is just click the underscore D for the diffuse and the underscore N for the normal. They don't have any effect on the model, it's just for more display purposes. So you can literally just select the same one over and over again, it doesn't really matter. Once they're all in for every sub-tool of the actual model, then you will see that your model is now the active tool in the right-hand corner, and you'll see a little picture of the model itself. So you see here that there's a Tenogen kind of ash body as its active tool on the right-hand side here, a little white one, and that basically means that you'll be drawing this tool in the viewport when you click and drag, and you'll see that one is drawn here. This is Ash with his helmet, his body and his retractable blades. This is what's given to you by DE and it's kind of where you start off. But you notice when I'm clicking these buttons, such as the frame, the move, the scale and rotate on the right hand side, nothing happens because I haven't actually said that I want to edit this model. So if you continue to click and drag in the viewport, you'll just do multiple duplicates of this model, but you will not be able to edit it until you click the edit button above the viewport or by pressing the button T. Control N refreshes the viewport, which means it gets rid of all these duplicates, and it kind of happens if this ever happens to you in the future. You need to click Edit Mode, which is seen here, by clicking the name or the letter T, and you're now in Edit Mode, which means you will be able to sculpt onto this body. So as you can see here, it's kind of just a red body, very low poly, um, this is what they give you. This is what Ash looks like in game without all the textures, so you're kind of surprised. He's not a high poly model, it's just a low poly, and this is kind of what you'd be expected to give for your final version too. But I can now also rotate, scale, and move this model, which is a good indicator to see if you're in edit mode. If not, you may want to see if, uh, how you can get back into it. So if I look over here, I have my material on the left-hand side for the model. I prefer a skin shade 4 or a grey, because I think it's better to sculpt in that, or you can just use the default red if you like. But I think it's closer to having some sort of skin shade here, um, just for kind of sculpting purposes. But we're going to go kind of for like a matte cap grey here, which means that we'll see some nice definition when we're sculpting. And uh, it's just getting comfortable with the, with the controls here. Um, I'm circling here now the polygon count. The active one is the current tool, which is the body for me. The total is the total polygons, and this is something to be very mindful of when you're doing your sculpting, um, especially for the future to see if you're kind of uh, going to choke your computer like mine. So if I go to the sub tool here on the right, I'll be able to see the complete list of tools that are for Ash. I have a helmet. I have a thing for his retractable blades and his body. If you're submitting a skin for him, basically you'll need to be just doing the stuff for the body. But um, a helmet has to be constructed from scratch without it. A good way to kind of start sculpting is basically just to highlight the uh, default ash helmet, smooth it out a little bit, and uh, kind of start with your basic circular form. So that's what we're going to start doing now, and I'll speak some more tips as we're going along. So this thing is kind of the frame, the face, the F button that brings it to the kind of main viewpoint. Depending on which sub you have selected, that would be the one that's kind of brought to your full attention. Just look around here to see what kind of shapes it is. You'll see that my tool is going blue and yellow as I'm switching to different tools. Blue is the smooth tool that's done by holding down shift and it kind of smooths the vertices. Control is a mask and allows you to select basically pieces of the mask that you don't want to touch. So holding down shift makes it blue and it smooths the tool. Holding down control masks out an area and basically isolates it from being edited. 
If you mask a certain area that turns black, everything outside that black can then be touched without affecting the original part. And then if you want to say, okay, I want to do the opposite, if you hold down control and click outside of the area of your thing, it will switch the mask's point. So then you can basically switch between which part you want to affect. And that's kind of your masking at a very, very uh, simple and uh, starting level. Um, now, the best kind of thing here is when you're doing a lot of these things is to make sure you're sculpting symmetrically. Um, because obviously clean symmetrical lines are very handy here. I want to activate symmetry along the X axis or the middle one. I press the X button and then the red little button then appears to show me where it's also mirrored by. You can see here now that it's not actually on the face of Ash. So I'm sculpting on one hand side, but the thing is not mirrored along the symmetrical side of the other half of the helmet. So there's a problem here basically where this, the line of symmetry for Ash is with the base model. So we have to move over the actual uh, mesh to kind of make sure it's uh, evenly mirrored. So there's a move tool at the top, and um, you can do it with the, with the letter Q or W, I believe. And basically, we're just kind of trying to align it along the line that basically when I do my sculpting on one side, when we go to the middle line, both of those little red dots line up exactly in the middle, because then we know it's perfectly symmetrical. And if I do anything on the right-hand side, it mirrors on the left-hand side and vice versa. Once we're happy with how it's lining up and we see that it's directly in the middle, then we can just move over the body as well. So from now on, we'll have no problems with sculpting along the X axis. And some frames are like this, not all of them, but if you have this problem, you basically know just kind of move it over a little bit until you're basically uh, in, in line. So now that I know that my ash helmet and my body is symmetrical, I can continue now sculpting to make sure it's a nice, neat helmet. Unless your design is asymmetric, I would still allow it to be perfectly symmetrical and mirrored. That you basically just turn off symmetry if you want to sculpt asymmetrically. Don't rely on a kind of a, a translated uh, line. So I'm going back to the helmet here. I'm just going to start smoothing out some shapes, smoothing out kind of the rough helmet. Usually for a head, I start off with like an egg shape. If I press my B button, I get my complete list of brushes that I may use. For beginning, I usually uh, use, well, I have this Warframe standard brush, which is the one they use at DE. It's a modified version of the standard brush. I have it down below for you guys. All you need to do is load it into your Z brush or drag it into your Z startup file for your Z brush and put in your brushes. It is the one they use and it's a really nice tool. Now, the main ones for starting off you want to do is the move tool to really kind of block out your silhouette and your, where your helmet's going to go. And that is basically the move tool. By clicking any letter of the tools that you may see, it will kind of highlight and filter down the ones that begin with that letter. And you'll see in the top left corner of those then, there's a letter that says basically if you tap this letter, this brush will be selected. So if I click B for brushes, M, because I know the tool I want to do, use this begins with M, and then I select V, because that's the one in the top left corner of that tool, the move tool will then be selected and I can start blocking out my low poly sculpture. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm blocking out with the move tool roughly the shape I want the helmet to be. You're meant to really start with just shape and silhouette until you're happy with how it is. And then eventually you build up the detail until you want to get kind of more, uh, more refined. So you really want to spend at the lowest at you can. You always want to kind of do your silhouette at a really low polygon stage until you're very happy with how the shape is and the, the silhouette from all sides are. Then you can start bringing up another level of polygons and do a bit more refining and more and more and more. It's kind of cyclical like that. So I'm just kind of messing around with this ash helmet to see what I want. At the moment, it's kind of looking like a Japanese Power Ranger. I'm not really into that insectoid shape for this one. So I want to keep messing around to make it a little bit better. At any point, I want to go up a level of polygons, which is usually good. You can smooth it out and kind of get a nice softer shape, but sometimes it just still doesn't work. I want a bit more work or a bit more give to do. Um, you can go up a level of polygons by pressing Control and D. Mac users, it's Command and D, basically to go up a division level, which basically doubles or, you know, multiplies the amount of little faces on this thing, which gives you a bit more softer shapes and a bit more area to work with. For kind of biological and kind of building up of muscle and these kind of stuffs. The clay build up tool is really, really good. And that can be done by pressing B for brushes, C for clay, and then B for the build up tool. And it allows you to kind of really build up large amounts of volume very easily. But at this low poly stage, things can get very messy because they don't have a lot of faces to work with. So what I want to do is I want to evenly distribute out all these again. And this is where the tool Dynamesh comes in. 
So DynaMesh basically realigns all your, your, your polygons on your face to make sure they're nice evenly dispersed. You don't have a weird ratio of large faces to small faces, it will try to rearrange it all along. And it's found in your geometry tool on your right hand side by selecting the resolution for how much you want. Make sure projection mode is on. Click the DynaMesh button and then it will start to basically make uh, realign them into a lot more even. The resolution affects kind of like how what's the rough range you want to go up to in terms of polygon count. I brought mine up a little bit here to around roughly three and a half thousand. And you see that I've got this lovely polygons. They're all roughly evened out, which means that I can get a bit more detail, a bit more kind of a nicer shape. But you'll see that as I'm sculpting more and more, those polygons get scratched, stretched again. And by clicking DynaMesh again, they're now evenly distributed. So it's a really nice tool for kind of remapping your area. You don't want uh, too much stretch polygons, it doesn't look good. And it's a really nice tool basically to kind of uh, get you the look that you want. So uh, you can always go down as well. You don't have to keep the same resolution. You can go down a resolution here. I see that on my right hand side of the chin of the ash, there's something that's sticking out and it should not be, no matter what I'm dynameshing. So there's a problem here that I want to fix. If this was lovely and symmetrical, that basically the left hand side would be like the right hand side, which means that I have to kind of make sure that they're both mirrored. And this is where the real tool called a uh, mirror and welt comes in. So if you ever do something on one hand side and you haven't mirrored it over and you may have a problem, the mirror and welt tool in the modify topology section is a lifesaver and it makes sure that the right hand side is perfectly mirrored to the left. So it's a really nice tool if you're sculpting on the left hand side and you accidentally turn off your symmetry, go to the geometry section, modify topology and mirror and weld, and then it will mirror over the changes onto the right hand side. There's also the Y and Z axis for like above and down and back and front, but most people kind of would use it for the left and right hand side. And I see here now that basically that chin artifacts were gone and I can continue as I want, just getting that nice uh, silhouette I want. I'm gonna go up at division level by pressing Control and D, which kind of makes me uh, have more polygons, which means that I won't have as many rough shapes. Sometimes it's nice to kind of say it a bit of a lower level. 600 polygons is not a lot to work with, so I kind of think maybe 3000 roughly is better. Control D and I'm up now, but a lot smoother. It gives me a bit more room to work with in terms of sculpting my shapes. So I'm using the move tool once again to kind of start bridging more shapes. I'm, I'm, I'm not really feeling it, so I thought maybe I'd switch tools and to kind of see, okay, what's a cool silhouette I can work for Ash here that might not be a, his normal style. So I'm looking kind of like what, you know, chin. It's very important when you're making helmet that the neck bridges the helmet seamlessly. There shouldn't be any kind of weirdness or any uh, floatingness is one, but make sure that the helmet and the skin really are kind of holistic with each other. If you're not doing a skin with your helmet, you have to kind of make sure that the helmet bridges it with the default skin perfectly. There should be no weirdness or no kind of, uh, uh, no discontinuity, I suppose. So um, the move tool is really nice here. You can start to see that there's, cer there's certainly a semi-human face coming out here. You're not allowed to have facial features that are very direct because uh, Warframe is going to be kind of like an abstract uh, facial features. So no distinctive uh, eyes or mouth. Mirage is a little bit of a difference because she has eyes. Um, but you, you know, every Warframe should have a chin and they should have basically kind of an area where it's definitely a head and definitely a, a side and cheekbone kind of area. So that's kind of what you're looking for. You're looking for these kind of, uh, uh, it should look like a head and some sort of a face, but it should not look like a human or look directly like a a, a person. So I'm looking at here now, I'm kind of, you know, I brought it up another division level here. Now, obviously you want to kind of do this until you cannot get any more detail out of that polygon limit. And then you subdivide and go up a level and then you start working from there. It's only when you reach the limit of what you can do with that thing, then you should go up more and more. And you should only leave fine details for when you're in like the millions of polygon count to kind of get the really fine detail there at the last straw. But I'm using the move tool and the clay buildup and uh, some of the, the other tools. Just basically really look at the shape here. I don't like this thing I have at the moment because it looks like nostrils and you don't really want that. Um, so I want to kind of some sort of like metal uh, a visor and the helmet. Um, some sort of a kind of shogun uh, mushroom thing going on here. <laughs> and uh, it's just filling out rough shapes. It's all about making it look kind of a, either if you're going for a corpus, it would be more techy, more hard surface maybe. But I want to kind of go for a semi kind of organic look here. So I'm looking at kind of what shapes feel right. Where do things stop? What parts do they finish? It's all these kind of things I'm looking at. It obviously helps if you have a concept or a sketch or know what you're doing. I'm just freeballing this for the sake of demonstration. This is no way going to be a thing that I'm going to submit or whatever because you cannot do a helmet in 20 minutes so you have to do it over time to make sure you're doing it right 
Um, yes, a common feature that I see in some Warframes are they've got like this kind of a extruded spine. I was thinking maybe I'd bring that up into the helmet as well. And this part up here with the clay buildup allows me to kind of see more muscular, more, um, you know, shapes that could be seen on the helmet and it's really really good for this um building up shapes with the, the clay build up and then just smoothing them out or using dynamesh or something to kind of get bigger points if you want large big horns you can do this way by using the move tool or the clay build up dynamesh move it up clay build up dynamesh and just building your horns that way or you can make a, a new sub tool and insert a, a shape and move it from there and have your you know multiple different shapes um and the thing here you see now, when I have my red tool, I'm pressing the alt button on and off to show you that basically you're in additive mode. And when you see a little minus symbol beside your cursor, it's in negative mode. So when you're sculpting with your tool and press the alt button, it does the inverse of what you do. So clay buildup is an additive tool, which means it builds up. And when you hold the, uh, the alt and you sculpt, it will basically cut away. So this is a really nice way to kind of get um, different shapes. They can basically have two functions in one, three if you count the, the, the smoothing tool. So you can go additive, subtractive, or smooth, and you get a, you can get really creative with how you're working this. Um, I like to use the obviously the Warframe um, brush, which is really good for uh, for fine detail. But clay buildup is kind of king when it comes to this thing. Um, obviously, certain creators have their own preference one. I think it's one of the nicest tools because it comes with ZBrush. It's a fault brush, and it really does a lot of stuff uh, that you may need it for. So um, it's really just basing kind of what do I want to make here? What's the thing? Is it going to be metal on top? What kind of structure I want? Is it going to be organic on top? Do I need to do hard surfacing, which is kind of making flat surfaces? If you do, then you need to use different brushes because the clay buildup is great for taking away and adding, but it's quite strong. So at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm going to switch to my Warframe standard brush, which is what I call it. It's this is a modified standard brush. And once again, I do have a link down below for you to use. It is the one they use at the E. And it's really great for kind of using uh, fine uh, details. So I went up to about 50,000 polygons here, which is not where you want to start doing your details. But for the sake, I'm showing you kind of what you can do. The Warframe one is kind of what you see with the flesh parts of the Tenno and stuff like that. It's a really nice tool. Great for roughly lining out edges to give a bit more definition. Um, there's certain things you do with the Warframe tool that are kind of key uh, uh, characteristics that you'll notice if you look at the Warframe styling and stuff like that. Um, metal, you want to kind of make it look like metal with some nice defined edges. Um, obviously hard surfacing is probably better if you want a distinct look. Um, but there's certain things you can do with the Warframe flesh that's really, really cool. And it's kind of the, it's the flip-flopping of uh, adding and subtracting when you're sculpting. So if you do a line with the addition, uh, the additive mode and quickly go down to a subtractive mode, you'll see that that kind of thing is seen in a lot of Warframes in both Grenier and kind of a Tenodin style. And you'll see it as I'm doing here. I'll draw along a line and in additive mode. I'll then switch for a little bit of down to kind of subtractive mode and it makes a little pocket in. And then I go back to additive mode, and it's a it's kind of a nice feature. A little things that I kind of try to try to give little tips here for sculpting is that if you do something you're like oh that's nice, but it didn't do it as strong as I wanted. If you do these things and you press one, it'll redo the last thing you did. So if you moved it, it'll move it again. But if you did a sculpt and like okay I liked that, I want to do it again, press one, and it will actually uh it'll do the, the last move again. So sometimes it's nice to kind of get a bit more of a defined line. And you'll see that kind of here. Um, I'm using the, the hard polish tool, the H polish tool, which is great for uh, for hard surfaces. Um, if you're looking for more of a robotic or very defined chin, which I want here. Um, but that Warframe tool is really, really, uh, it's a really handy tool. I'm glad that we got it off uh, Synchrosis. She's really care kind enough to give it to us, um, to give us the entire settings. And all you have to do is basically load it up and you have it there. Um, and this is kind of, yeah, on this chin strap, you'll see now that I'm defining the jaw really strong. And above it, I'm drawing, doing the subtractive thing, and then adding again. Not strong enough, press the one, and it is double the thickness. And it's a really, really cool little uh, trip uh, that, obviously, don't overuse it. You want your entire skin to look like it and vary the kind of the intensity of it. But if you notice things now like this, you'll actually start looking in the skins of both Tenogen and Default skins and seeing what characters they are. If the grooves are done to kind of like a separated piece of flesh, make this kind of the size of the brush half as the size and then accentuate along those scars and those kind of grooves and you'll see that's kind of a, a nice uh, uh, thing to do.
Now comes the point, imagine when you're like in the millions of polygons and your helmet is perfect and you love it and you want to go onto the body. The body you cannot change the geometry of at all. So what they give you this shape here, it cannot change. You have to basically go up a few subdivision levels and sculpt onto that. You cannot add anything to it. You cannot add, like, remove an arm, remove anything on the body. What they give you is what you have to use. And that's kind of what Tenogen is. With Mirage, you can't rule for leg parts. You cannot do it at all. You have to basically use what they want. If there's a prime frame, we cannot get that model. We cannot change that prime frame model. It's just luck of the draw whether your skin actually takes onto the prime model well. So you can't really edit that. Um, there's the most common things that people ask like, oh, what do I want to, how do you get the prime details? We, we can't. We just hope that it, it, it does well. So when you're doing the body, basically the best thing is kind of follow the lines of the geometry you have and kind of work with those. Um, sometimes if you try to go over them or you know soften them down when you actually unwrap them and do your textures later on for your tints and textures, it comes out a bit uh, wonky. So you kind of want to follow the lines and work with them rather than against them. Um, and you're basically just going to sculpt onto all the details. Now you can add different subtools onto it, but once they come into the final stage, they'll be baked into it, which is kind of means that they'll be flattened down and make them look like they're actually a part of it, but they're just basically flat detail. Um, so it's kind of really nice just to start off and just kind of work with it. Um, you can dynamesh the skins as well and all this kind of stuff like we're doing with the helmets, but some frames their uh, dynameshing causes some problems and causes holes behind certain parts. Um, so you just want to be careful. As long as there's nothing hiding in a part um, from other parts, you're pretty much grand. Um, so I'm just looking at here, kind of like, what's the rough shape I want to look at for this um, if I'm doing a full skin? Um, it's If you can do a helmet, you can do a body. And the body is easier because you do a body skin. You don't have to make a low poly of the body like you do the helmet. The helmet, whatever highest poly you make, you have to make a low poly version and submit that for the game to work with. But that's more of the next episode where we look at low polys and UVs. Um, but the body, basically you're just sculpting onto the body they give you and you just kind of, um, you bake it onto theirs, which is nice. It's a lot less work than the, the helmet. Um, and it's just practicing here. Like I'd kind of like, even if you're if you're learning it, if it's on Sculptress or Blender or these different items, different tools kind of uh, are different ones. ZBrush is the standard and what they use there. It's also an expensive program. It's nearing, I think, what, $800, $700 for ZBrush. Um, but it's a it's an industry tool. And that's kind of what you expect. Um, there's alternatives, but I don't really, I haven't got experience with them. I know Sculptress is great for learning this kind of stuff there. Um, I find bodies much easier than the helmets and I think I get a lot more creative with the body because you're given the shape and you're working with it rather than, uh, you know, make a helmet, which is very open-ended um, and that's kind of really where you have to get kind of creative. Um, so with this Ash one, I can see the shape here, he's like, okay, this is fine, I'm just doing some details, the arms and the body and the legs, maybe we'll go for some sort of Japanese uh, wrestler ninja Gaiden kind of style suit. Um, but I'm thinking now, like, okay, what will my colors be? So on the right hand side, you see something called poly paint. I turned colorize mode on, which means I can paint it. And my standard brush here is set to be additive mode. If I want to paint onto it only, I have to make sure that only RGB or MRGB is selected. I select my color and then I can basically paint on the body where I think my colors will be. And it's really good to kind of give yourself a visual reference and like kind of see where it is. Um, some people wait until they do the entire sculpt. Some people do it as they're doing it. Some people will map out first. It's also a really good way to sketch your idea onto the body as well. So before you even start sculpting on the body, you could always just draw out with a black line on poly paint to see where it is. I usually go for my base color of the way I think the, the skin will be and just paint everything. Because if you select a color, that every tool that's not active, the one that you're not editing, will go that default color and it annoys me. So I basically just go through all the tools and give them a, a base color and from there I can start painting onto it. Um, so this poly paint is a really nice tool. Um, obviously remember if you're doing a skin for Warframe, you have five colors to choose. One for your primary, secondary, tertiary, accent and energy. So kind of select where you're going with those and kind of look where it is. You don't have to be exactly neat, but obviously the neater you are, the better down the line for your tins and textures it will be. So I'm kind of mapping out, okay, what's going to be my four colors? Obviously I'm very, very, uh, I love metals. So I'm like, okay, what's my metal area? What's it going to be? Where's my my thing? And I'm just mapping out where I think the tint will be. And it gives you also kind of nice lines to finish, to follow when you're doing your designs. Obviously there's little things like some Tenno markings to kind of give it more flair. 
Um, some colored parts obviously don't always reflect a sculpted part, but sometimes it, it starts bringing your thing to life and you get to see it in a bit more of a 3D sense, like, okay, this is where I'm going. This is starting to look cool. Or it could also be like, yeah, there's too much color. I need to break it up some more. There's multiple different ways, um, but for poly paint, you just need to make sure that your poly paint on the right hand side in your list of, uh, of your functions is set to colorizes on. And you're basically just turning off your additive or subtractive from your standard brush and just making sure RGB or MRGB mode at the top is set on. You can also do gradients and stuff like that too. There's different things on the top. So we obviously have stuff like focal shift and draw size and your intensity for sculpting on the on the top bar. But you also have RGB intensity to see like how strong is that color gonna be. Do you wanna have some multiple different shades in it? Um, I think having block colors of the five is a much easier in the long run for when you're going to Substance Painter and do and textures um, but so it's all about finding your personal workflow these videos are hopefully meant to get you started and kind of to know what's coming up for you I'm not here to teach you sculpting but at least it'll give you a bit of a, a you're not gonna drown in the pool kind of thing um, and that's kind of the, the poly paint function once you're really happy with how everything is and the final thing is you're like okay I'm happy I'm done really from there once your helmet is perfect and your skin is perfect you just need to export your helmet and your body um, separately so i usually do it as an uh, fbx file because that's kind of what i use more for textures and that kind of stuff there um you can just export as an obj as well but these things are i'm basically just selecting the visibility with the eye icons to see what i'm going to export and in the z plugin um a tool at the very top there's multiple different things there's the 3d print hub which allows you to export obj's there's the fbx export import that we use to import the file and that's what i use to export my fbx i say that i only want to export the visible parts which is great for if you have multiple parts and export and it will export the fbx file which can use the next parts that's coming up and this has been really the, uh, the intro into kind of roughly getting you started in ZBrush. It's been 25 minutes or so. Um, obviously, there's more things to watch. I recommend watching Tenergen creators on Twitch and watching YouTube videos. But this should at least kind of start airing, um, kind of giving you a bit more of kind of where things go. Some things you may not uh, know. As always, you can tell down below any questions you may have. I'll try to answer my best. The next video will be about what is low topology, retopologizing and making your UVs and how to do them and well i use topo gun and maya you can use them in blender but for the sake of next video it'll be in my tools and what they are and what they mean and why you do it and um, i hope this has been intuitive i hope you have a bit more of an understanding about what to do and uh we'll see you in the next episode in maybe two or three weeks so um thank you very much as always from me uh hydroxate and shadow draws and especially from the people at de thank you and i hope this is making things a little bit easier <laughs>